Chad knows how to pick out some songs. <laughs> I, uh, that one right there, boy, if, if that one doesn't get you, uh, get you stirred up, I don't know what will. You're just not human. <laughs> if that one doesn't get you stirred up, there's a God. Would you look out? I, I tell you, flying in, uh, flying over the mountains, I am a mountain man at heart. I love the mountains. And uh, that, was, that was a very appealing aspect to this work. Okay, I'll just be honest with you. Uh, first impression, mountains, I'm there. But I tell you what, I came here and fell in love with the people. My wife, Stacy, she just, I think I told you the last time we were here, I, it's so hard to believe that that was two weeks ago. My life has been a whirlwind the past two weeks. But uh, two weeks ago when we were here, I told you, Stacy, Stacy told me before services, before the worship service started, she, she said, I think everybody has hugged me, and one man called me dear. I'm good. <laughs> and we have learned to love the congregation, and um, I can tell you that already I have, um, I've learned to have a deep respect for the elders and their wives. And no, I'm not saying that because uh, they've decided to, uh, the congregation has decided to make me your preacher. I, one thing I think you'll learn about me is I don't say it if I don't mean it, and I mean that. You're very fortunate, you're very blessed, and I hope, I hope that uh, you, you realize that, I believe you do. Be sure to let them know. Your deacons, they work hard, they serve you. Quite often behind the scenes, um, most often you, you, you don't even know what they're doing until something goes wrong. And that's the only time you ever see so often what the deacons or others uh, that maybe do not serve in an office, but are, are, are working behind the scenes and making things happen. Just be sure to say thank you every once in a while and let them know that you really appreciate the fact that you can come in and things are ready for you to sit down and worship God. Thank you for your vote of confidence. Our, my family's excited. The trailer is packed, the moving trailer. It is packed with all of our furniture. We're camping out in the house, uh, finishing boxing up a few things getting ready to move, have secured a place to live here uh, for a while, and we're excited about that, excited about coming to this community and working with you. Help me out with something, please. We are about to engage in a new phase. We're not starting something new. You've already been doing it. I'm just getting to come in and be a part of it. Huh? But we're, we're about to start a new phase as we uh, become married to each other and work together. And that's the way I view ministry with the congregation. I view it as a marriage. And, and, and so we're about to be, become engaged. And so please, first of all, be patient with me. I'm terrible with names. It's going to take me a while. Just remind me every time you see me until I shake hands and call you by name first. That'll help. But the other thing is... If you eat at the clock restaurant, there's a little lady who eats there. Somebody may know her, but whether you know her or not, there's a little lady who eats there. Her name is Margaret, and she eats there quite a bit. Talked with her the other day. Margaret is my first project, and uh, I want you, if you will, when you eat at the clock, if you go in and you see this little older lady sitting by herself eating, just stop by, say hi and invite her to the Bowling Springs Church of Christ. Would you do that for me? And then, um, and then maybe after Margaret, you might, you might stop and speak to somebody else. Maybe the next lunch you have, you just kind of pick out somebody, maybe sitting by themselves, a little lonely or whatever, just speak to them. It's okay. Really, most people won't shoot you if you stop and talk to them. Most people. So pick out the ones that, that look, look the least aggressive. To start out with, and and let's let's you're probably already doing this, okay? But let's be sure that when we go out into the community, we're talking to people every single day about the Lord, what He's done in our lives, and how they can be a part of it in this spiritual family. And then let's start thinking about how we're going to handle the results. 
we're, we're going to have to be looking at, I'm, I'm sorry, elders, we're going to have to be looking at a building project. <laughs> okay? Because not, not because of me. I am not going to come in here and grow this congregation. I'm not. You are. We are. We're going to do it together. And I tell you what, if you will go out and set up Bible studies, all you have to do, now give me a week or so to get settled in, and, and, and if you get one before then, I'll, I'll, we'll make it happen. All you have to do is make the contact, open the door, let me know, and then you and I can go together and study the Word of God with those people. I'm sure any of the elders will be happy to do it with you also. We're going to do that. We're going to make that happen. You're going to keep me, you are going to keep me so busy that I can't think straight with Bible studies. And, or if you feel comfortable doing them on yourself, just do it. But if you need me, please let me know. With God's blessings, with God's blessings, we will grow. We will grow because and in the way that the church in the first century grew. In Acts chapter 2, and we find the, the gospel being preached for the first time, that first gospel message. We find the inception, the beginning of the church. And uh, they asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? The answer came back, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And then notice what happened. Verse 41, those that gladly received the word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000 souls the very first day. Folks, we have the same gospel that they had. And people need it today just as much as they did. And people are just as hard-headed today as they were then, and they were just as hard-headed then as they are today. The only thing different is the excuses that we make about why we can't do what they did. And so we're not going to make any excuses. We're going to step out in faith, and we are going to assume that what God has said is still true because we don't have to assume it, we know it. And Jesus said, all authority is given to me, and, and, and some translations say, all power has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, we are going to go because he has the power and he has commissioned us. It's not our power. Somebody says, well, I don't know, I just don't, I just don't know if, 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 if I can do this. Listen, it's not, it's not your power you're working on. It's Christ's power. It's not your authority you're working on. It's His. You have been commissioned by He who has the power to create the world with His Word. All things were created through Him. And without Him was there nothing made that was made. He has the power. He has the power to change your life. He has the power to give you purpose. He has the power to do amazing things with you. And if you will submit yourself to Him as His instrument, you, you just stand back and be amazed at how He's going to work with you. You can do it. Now, where? The mission field. Where's that? Well, it depends on where you are. If you're at school, that's your mission field. If you're at work, that's your mission field. If you're, uh, if you're at the uh, Senior Citizen Center, that's your mission field. If you're across the street uh, at, at the park, that's your mission field. It is wherever we are, and we take the, the gospel just like they did in Acts chapter 2. Look at what happened. Verse 44, now all who believed were together and had all things in common. That's where we start. Having all things in common in the Word of God as we center our lives around. You know what? There's no, there's no me and you there. There's no rich or poor. There's no difference of, uh, of, of color of skin or ethnicity or social status. We are Christians. We're children of God. We are a family. And we look at each other and we say, we're going to work together. And, and so we have those things in common. Verse 44, they had all things in common. Verse 45, and so their possessions, goods, divide them among all as anyone had need. We take care of each other. Continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. God does the adding. We do the teaching. And He does the saving and the adding. And the church grows. The church grew like wildfire. And you know why? Because they believed what 
God had done in their life, and they wanted to tell people about it. And so we go over to Acts chapter 8, and we find the church growing. Why? Because they were being persecuted. And everywhere they went, they went preaching the gospel. Everywhere they went. You realize what they were doing? They were doing the very thing they were being hunted down because of. Saul was trying to, to kill them. They were, being, they were being slaughtered. They were being imprisoned. And it didn't stop them. When we have that kind of conviction, nothing can stop us. You know the greatest curse? You know the greatest curse uh, to the church, I believe, in, in, the, in the sense of keeping us from doing our work? Our blessings. I mean, we're so comfortable. God's given us so much, and we say, yeah, this is nice. I think I'll just sit here for a while. And sometimes it takes being stirred up. Sometimes it takes a little persecution. You know what I pray? Some people may not like this. I pray, I don't pray that God will bring prosperity to this nation. I don't. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, we're, we pray, so, you know, Lord, things, things are tough economically. We, we pray that, that you'll, you'll bring us through this. Have you ever been to a place like India? Africa, South America, some of you have been. You've seen how prosperous we are. I don't pray that God will bless us with prosperity. I pray that God will bring this nation to repentance by whatever means necessary. I pray that God will help this nation to turn around and by whatever means he sees fit to do that. If we have to, if we have to go through dearth, if we have to go uh, through hardships, if we have to be persecuted, if that's what it takes to wake up God's people and to wake up a nation, then I pray that he'll make it happen. Now, maybe, maybe, just maybe, the Lord's church will wake up and we'll get out there and start doing what God has commissioned us to do and we'll change it before he has to do that. Now, let's get out there. And let's be working. Let's grow first in spirit. Yes, individually. We need each other. We're told to bear each other's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I need you. You need me. We need each other. We need the strength to lean on. Let's grow collectively. The church can provide opportunities for growth. Many opportunities. And, but it's not, it's not just in programs. Programs are nice. They're good. They help us to accomplish our goal. But you know where growth begins Growth begins when I come up to you and I put my hand on your shoulder, give you a hug, and say, you know what, I love you. I love you, and I want to get to know you. As my brother, my sister in Christ, would you come over to my house Friday night and let's have dinner, spend some time together, get to know each other? We start to develop a bond. And we start learning that, you know what, that person over there that I see on Sunday morning and in, in their best, sitting in the pew, singing and smiling, they hurt just like I do. They struggle just like I do. They have joys and they have successes just like I do. And we can share all of those together. And we develop that bond as a spiritual family and then we begin to grow. With God's blessings, we will evangelize. As it was read, the Great Commission and Jesus said, the power is mine, therefore I am telling you to go. And then in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, where he tells us to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. Why? And, 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 and when we understand this, and we, we talked in class about the fact that everything's motivated by love, and I look at that person, I look at that drunk on the side of the road, I, I, I look, I, I see that, that, that woman over there who's... who's you know, she, she's doing things with her life and with her body that, that just make you, make you uh, just, just wonder how anybody could get to that point. And, and, or or that, that person who's a, a very rebellious in their attitude and you wonder what's happened in their life. It's caused them to be that way. And we start looking at them. Instead of, instead of looking at them through these templates of judging them, we, we start to look at them, judging them with righteous judgment, motivated by love, seeing how sin is destroying them with a desire to bring them to God. And then, we remember what Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Every single person you and I meet, 
fall into one of those two categories in terms of their salvation. And you and I have the power to make a difference in their lives. Through love, through the teaching of the truth, we can make a difference. And we've got to love them enough to care. You know, it's been said so many times, and it's, it's an old, worn-out phrase, but it's so true. That people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so in this community, without regard to social or ethnic differences, let us go into our mission field. In the foreign fields, we continue to teach, and I am so impressed. I have told so many people about this congregation, and I, I've tried to kind of keep things under wraps because I didn't, you know, I didn't want everything showed up on Facebook. We might be coming here before the elders announced it, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I want to talk. I want to tell people, you know, I'm excited about this. I've got to be quiet. But, I, you know, I, I tell people that I trust you, that, you know, don't. Of course, it's all over Wilson County. Uh, believe me, everybody in Wilson County already knows. Um, but the thing that has amazed me, so many things have amazed me about this congregation, but I'll tell you one thing, your Hispanic work and the way it was done, and, and the way that, that you stamped out on faith. Folks, it takes faith to go to another town, buy a church building, and begin a, a work uh, in, a, in a congregation in another town like you did. That takes faith. So many would say, oh, we, you know, that's... We, we're afraid to go in debt. We, well, if we use that money here, then what will we do if we don't have it at the bank and we need it? You stepped out on faith, and you said the power is in God. He's going to take care of it, and you made it happen. And that inspires me. That excites me. That motivates me. To come and work with such a minded, spiritually minded, vision-driven people and eldership. You've seen the mission field. Well, let's not lose sight of it. That mission field that begins at home and where we are. With God's blessings, we'll lead our youth to faithfulness. Proverbs 22, verse 6, and you know it well. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know that's so true. It doesn't say that he will never leave the path of righteousness. It doesn't. It says when he is old, he will not depart from it. And yes, it's a proverb. It's not a law. It's a proverb. But it's a, it, is, it is an inspired proverb, and it is true. About a month ago, about a month ago, something happened that I have been waiting and praying for about 30 years. Because it's been about that long that my oldest sister, since she left home and left the faith and went into a lifestyle that took her away from God. But about a month ago, as I was preaching a gospel meeting, just finishing up in Lawrence County, the invitation song had been sung. The home preacher was standing up, making some announcements. And I'm standing there, and I, I sent somebody by my side, and I look up, and there's my sister. She has tears in her eyes. She said, I'm ready to come home. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. You give him a foundation. It is our job. It is our job to give this precious stewardship that God has granted us, this precious heritage, to give them a foundation that prepares them for the world and prepares them to be the ones who will carry Bowling Springs Church of Christ into the next generation and will ensure the faithfulness and the security of the work of this congregation and this community. I see you're doing that. I'm keeping up with you. I've been watching you on Facebook. I've been spying on you in different ways, you know, seeing what you're up to. I see it. You're doing it. Let's keep it up. We owe it to them, and they need us. And let's be there for them every single time they need us. And young people, I want to let you know, I love you. There's nothing more than I would want to see than to see you to succeed spiritually. Anything, at any time, that I can do to help you 
don't hesitate ever. Don't even think twice. And I don't care what time it is. Two o'clock in the morning, you need to talk. You call me and let's talk. Okay? And I mean that. And that goes true for anybody and everybody. I tell people, just call me during my office hours. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I want you to understand that. And I mean it. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Because now, they, they say, well, it's time to sow our wild oats. Boy, I've got to watch this clock. I am so sorry. My plane leaves at 1.30 and it's leaving with or without me. And... Um, I'm not being unsociable, but pretty soon after the amen said, we got to run. I think you understand. There'll be plenty of time to catch up. Remember now, your creator in the days of you, it's not time for sowing wild oats. You know what happens with wild oats? There's a harvest. There's a harvest. You sow those wild oats now, later on, you're going to reap the consequences because every single decision that you make, good or bad, has consequences. You will pay. But you remember now your creator in the days of your youth, and then you see how God blesses you and how that God has instituted the laws to protect you and to provide for you and to give you that which you need to succeed. What is needed in order to, to train up our young people, parents and others, all of us need to be involved. The youth work is not the work of one or two individuals who has an interest in young people. Every single one of us should have an interest in our young people. Every single one of us should be engaged and involved with our young people as if they were our own because they are, we are a family. We're a family. A congregation which supports them, loves them, holds them up, and a young people with a desire for God. With God's blessings, we will be a pillar and ground of, for the, of the truth, as we read in 1 Timothy 3, verse 15, that the Lord's church is a pillar and a ground of the truth, a place where people can go and they know, they know that when they come to Bowling Springs Church of Christ, that when they worship, they're going to be worshiping according to that which God has authorized. You know something? We don't know how to come to God except He tells us and He's told us. And so we do it just as he's told us and he's pleased with it. We know it. We know God is pleased with our worship if we are worshiping as he authorized. Any other way, he's not pleased. Any other way, we're not coming to him. We're serving ourselves. Uh, we will be a pillar and a ground of the truth as you have been in the history of this congregation. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and we will, with God's blessings, be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in His work. We can sing, I love that song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I am standing where God has planted me, and I'll not be moved, because moving away from Him is not an option. And we'll stand on the truth of His Word. Jesus said, as we saw in class, sanctify them through truth. Thy Word is truth. And as we feast together on the Word of God, we draw closer to Him. And as we draw closer to Him, everybody starts to see it because you can't get close to God and hide it. You can't. It's impossible. You can't be close to God and hide it. People will see God living in us. How can, as a congregation, how can we make a difference? There's many ways. There's possibilities of edifying the Lord's church through lectureships, gospel meetings, broadcasted programs, uh, the media, training faithful gospel preachers here uh, through, through the work of training schools or abroad in training schools, training our youth to be faithful. I love, I love what, the, uh, what the, the eldership and what others are doing in this congregation and giving younger people opportunities to serve and, and uh, giving the men of the congregation the opportunities to develop leadership, and that's what we must do. By supporting faithful congregations, I believe this is so important. We at Bowling Springs are not an island. We are a part of the body of Christ. And when we find faithful brothers and sisters congregating in other places, then we are serving the body of Christ when we edify them. And so you have an opportunity to to have, uh, go to gospel meetings and other things where faithful brethren are, 
are, are worshiping and attempting to do the Lord's work, then let's reach out to them. And let's edify our brothers and sisters and other faithful congregations. With God's blessings, I will make a difference. And I don't mean me, I mean me, but you need to put yourself there. With God's blessings, I will make a difference because here's the thing, God has given me a responsibility and it's mine and nobody can do that for me. The elders can't do what God has commissioned you to do. I can't do what God has commissioned you to do. And, and so each of us fulfilling our responsibility before God, and I will make a difference. I will develop a deeper relationship with God. I will speak positively, not negatively, about the Lord's church, about my brother and sister in Christ. I will volunteer when a job needs to be done, not wait on someone else to do it. I will accept personal responsibility for this church. This is my church, this is my family, this is a place where I belong. It is God's Christ church, and I am a part of his body. I will attend and support every endeavor of this church that I can. I, I actually had this question on a questionnaire. There's another congregation that I was looking at, and, and a questionnaire they sent me was, what, the, the question was, what activities of the church would you feel like you would not need to be a part of? And my response was, if the church is doing something, I have a responsibility to be a part of it, unless it's catering a group that I'm, you know, specifically to a group that I'm not a part of. Not because I'm the preacher, because I'm part of this body. Because that makes it my work. And I want to be involved in the work of the church, and I want to help the church be everything it can be. And by praying for this church, you can make a difference. Prayer is powerful. You know why prayer is powerful? Because prayer is our way of talking to a powerful God. And He listens. Oh, believe me, He listens. For three months, my family and many, many others, so many people have told me, we've been praying that God will lead you to the place you belong. I believe God has answered that prayer. I believe that. It's no coincidence. It's not the way I live. I believe that God has a purpose. You are here because God has a purpose for you here. If you have submitted yourself to his will, if you are praying, Lord, you lead me and you guide me in the ways that I can serve you and edify you and glorify you the most, he will do it. Now, don't pray it if you don't mean it, because it may take some sacrifice. But you pray that, and oh, God is going to work. You know why? Because God is powerful, and he's real, and he's listening, and he's answering. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. So together, with God's blessings, we will grow. We will serve, and he will bless us because he is faithful. So then let us be faithful to him and to each other. He has said if we are faithful that he will bless us as he promised and to, the, uh, to the Israelites when the, the temple was, was dedicated. And he said, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now he said that about the temple. I believe that he could very well say that. I believe he will say that. I believe he has said that about the Church of Christ at Bowling Springs. This is where he is. Oh, he's everywhere. I know. He's with every faithful congregation. I know. But he's right here. He's working. And he has a plan. And you're part of it. You are an essential part of it. Together, let us find God's will and let us turn this community, and this world upside down. Stepping out in faith, believing that God can make a difference through us. With God's blessings, we will grow. With God's blessings, we will evangelize. With God's blessings, we will lead our youth to faithfulness. With God's blessings, we will be a pillar and ground for the truth. With God's blessings, I and you will make a difference with, because God is faithful. And if we are faithful to him, he will bless us in our efforts to his glory. First thing I have to do is be sure that my life is right with God, that my relationship with him is what it should be. If you're a child of God,
that is, if you've repented of your sins, confessed Jesus as the Son of God, were buried with him in the waters of baptism, thus added to his church, you have that relationship with him. Is it what it should be? Be honest with yourself. Please, be honest with yourself. You cannot afford to not be honest with yourself. Your salvation depends on it. And then having that relationship right with God, he will bless you and we will move forward. But let's be sure first that our relationship with him is right. If it's anything else, if it's anything else, if you doubt your salvation for any reason, there is no reason whatsoever, there is no reason in the world, there is no reason for eternity why you should walk out those doors doubting your salvation, having any questions about it. You make it right, you secure it right here and right now, and then move forward and let God put the past behind you. If you're his child, won't you come to him? Come back to him if you need. Hey, look, if you're just struggling, if you're just hurting, and you just need our prayers, we're here to pray with you and for you. That's what we do. We're a family. Would you come while we stand and sing?